Back, the South African media is buzzing with talk about who else but Jacob Zuma. That says the ANC leader's corruption trial looms large. The trial that may determine South Africa's next president starts next week. Now, the ANC has said that its leaders in government need to start towing the party line. It would seem then that the big question is not so much who, who is president, but who makes up the fabric of the ANC itself. We're going to find out right now if that's the case. Daniel Silk is an independent political analyst and scenario planner. Daniel, thank you very much for joining us on the program, and uh, welcome to you. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Um, I wonder if we are in a, a completely new era of ANC politics, given what's played out at uh, Polokwane. We've seen premiers uh, lose their jobs, and uh, we've seen... Uh, the alliance partners, uh, the tripartite alliance partners, align themselves with a particular figure within the ANC itself. Has a new era of ANC politics dawned, do you think? Look, I think there is a new era of ANC politics, but at the same time, I think Polakwani represents, and we're seeing it playing itself out in the ANC right now, a review. It's almost as though there's been a stockholders or a shareholders meeting within the ANC, and ANC members have had time now at Polakwani in the last nine months or so to reflect on the successes and failures of the Mbeki presidency. And really, I believe that what we are seeing is that the ANC are now grappling with the inefficiencies that have been prevalent across the board in governance within South Africa, and they are attempting to tackle it. Now, amidst all of that, we've got, of course, our constitution makes provision for uh, a two-term president, and Becky is on his way out, and it's fairly natural that where we have such a dominant political party like the ANC, there will be infighting for future positions, for power and for privilege as well. So there's a combination of factors at play here, and I don't really see it as being unnatural. How independent has government been from uh, the party itself? I mean, you see the NEC sits, they, they discuss, and they would advise the uh, sitting president. But it seems that the debate now is uh, there needs to be a more towing of the party line from uh, whoever sits in the uh, presidential seat. Yes, I think that uh, the Tabo Mbeki presidency was char characterized by his maverick character, his, his nature. Uh, he was the kind of president who really didn't follow or didn't like to follow the dictates of the NEC. And we are now seeing a reaction to this. And we've seen the NEC and, of course, the other component elements, Kasatu and the SACP, reject that type of presidency that was the Mbeki presidency and, in fact, want greater involvement in the future. And they perhaps see Jacob Zuma as the kind of leader through which, as a conduit through which they can have greater involvement. If Jacob Zuma, for any reason, is unable to take up his position as president, will it matter in terms of uh, ANC politics going forward and policy going forward? Who, who else might take up uh, the mantle as president? Well, South Africa is a complex country. It's also a country that's much bigger than even the ANC, even though the ANC is such a dominant political party. So I do believe that whilst personality and leadership play a role, the collective within the ANC and the component elements within the ANC, and it's not just the left, Kasatu or the SACP, there's a strong capitalist component as well within the ANC. They will continue to all call the shots together, whoever the personality at the helm is. So um, there may well be continuity, whether it's Zuma or whether it's somebody else. I believe there'll be a degree of continuity running through the future leadership within the country. There seems to be a perception that the, the left is gaining the ascendancy at the moment. How much of an influence do you think that they might have going forward? Yes, I think the left have gained the ascendancy. I think Polakwani offered the left a lifeline. This was their chance to really be uh, at, at the helm, so to speak. So uh, I think that we're seeing the rhetoric ratcheted up by the left. Uh, the left are making a play for government positions, senior positions going forward, if it is to be a Zuma presidency. Uh, and on that basis, I think we're seeing the left make a play for, them, uh, for, for senior leadership positions. Uh, we are yet to see the centrists within the ANC uh, have their voice heard. And I think that time might still come pending the outcome of any Jacob Zuma trial. And very quickly, if you could uh, just answer this question, the business community, uh, what, what does all of this mean for them going forward? Is it going to be pretty much business as usual to a degree or are we going to see significant shifts and they need to think of uh, uh, different strategies going forward? 
I think it's going to be a relative degree of business as usual. We will see rhetoric which will look as though it is more in tune with the poor and the demands of the poor. That will be evident in the new South Africa running forward. Uh, but fundamentally, I believe that we are looking at a business as usual scenario, but taking into account that if the left are in the ascendancy, the ANC will at least sound as though it is more in tune with the wishes of the poor, and the poor will get, will get perhaps a greater, a greater prominence in ANC policy making or decision making. That was one of the key issues. The key issue of the Mbeki presidency and the criticism of Mbeki was that he didn't adequately address issues of the poor. So perhaps at least business will perhaps see this to be evident and it's not a negative for South, for South Africa at all. Independent political analyst Daniel Silk, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Right, so quick heads up on the news headlines now, Fendi.